Please remain standing to recite the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, welcome everyone to worship this morning, especially the folks who are visiting with us. We're so glad you chose to worship with us this morning. Welcome also to those joining us online. We are glad to have you as well. Those of you who are here, please uh, take a moment and fill out the attendance pad located at the end of each aisle. Uh, It helps us keep in touch with you. Also, take a moment and check in on all the social medias and like our page to help share our church with others. A few announcements this morning. We have several meetings happening right after today's service. The Ramblers Lunch and Planning Meeting will be here in the Sanctuary. The Community Connections Committee will be in uh, the Finance Office and Youth Leadership It's in the library, I'm sorry. Community Connections will be in the library and youth leadership will be in the searcher's classroom. Um, Also, preschool is still selling the Krispy Kremes uh, for their fundraiser in the lobby today. The fundraiser closes on the 9th of this month. Uh, Please see Selena Wilson to place an order. Uh, Don't forget, you can just make a monetary donation in lieu of donuts and coffee if you like. They truly, truly appreciate your support for the good work that they're doing. Next Sunday, we will also have a special offering for the preschool. You're encouraged to bring a gift of $20 or more to, again, support that vital ministry. The church directory is now online. It, will be, it is accessible through our website and through their app. Um, Elisa is the administrator of this account and is the only person who can make changes, so rest assured uh, it is secure. If you will take the time to fill out as much of the information sheet in the bulletin uh, as you are comfortable with and submit it to her, we can get that information up to date and make sure we can all get in touch with with each other as needed. Uh, Thank you, church, again for a really successful Fifth Sunday Blitz. We were able to collect over 500 pounds of donations for the food pantry. So excellent job there. Um, Our beautiful flowers today are uh, uh, placed by Michelle Straw for the glory of God and in honor of Tim Straw's birthday. Now let us go together to the Lord and prepare our hearts uh, for worship through prayer. Lord, thank you for this day, this church, and this congregation. Thank you for the freedom to worship you and help us to bring your message of love and hope to those outside these walls. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right, we're still working on our Ephesians 2.8 memory verse. Anybody want to give it, take a stab and recite it this morning? <laughs> As I've said before, cowards. Cowards all. <laughs> ah, Jeff Seltzer, go ahead. He 
you singing it. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so we're going to do it with motions this morning. We've similar motions. The song is probably more effective, but we'll, we'll do it with the motions too. Um, and we'll go through it uh, twice with our, with our words here. Ready? All right, so four. Four, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2, 8. Right, let's try that again. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2, 8. Is the memory verse? Yeah. Good job. Good job. All right, keep working on that. Uh, we're winding down our time with that verse. I hope it's becoming very familiar um, revisit those old verses because if you don't use it, you lose it. Can you remember the phone number from your previous residence when, or you know, if you didn't carry your number? Like, no, you may, maybe, may, maybe not. Uh, you don't use those things, you, you lose them. Uh, you bump into someone, you're like, oh my gosh, I worked with that person for 20 years. What is their name? I mean, you think you keep on to those things. So if you don't keep up with it, you lose it. So uh, go through those verses again and uh, revisit with them. All right, now um, our children are now uh, able to be dismissed for children's worship, and uh, they'll go ahead and go on upstairs with Mr. Michael and have worship and Holy Communion up there together in their worship space. And then I invite Brooke to lead us in our offering. These are last month's numbers. Thank you for a great month of giving, and we can continue to give by the box in the back or to Church's PO Box and through the app. Please join me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting us gather in this building today for the warmth of the sun and the blessing of the rain to water the flowers. We thank you and we give thanks for this blessed and beautiful day. Please accept these tithes and offers as a token of our appreciation. Amen.
come now to our time to share in joys and concerns together this morning. What things do you have to lift up for our time of prayer? Mm -hmm. Steve? Yeah, uh, our first responders. Um, that should just be on our daily prayer list. Um, our first responders, truly. Uh, our, our military men and women that serve and uh, men and women that serve as first responders. Um, they, they, they experience and see um, things that, that stick with you that shouldn't, that you don't want to stick with you. Um, they have to deal with difficult circumstances. They put their lives in danger. Um, I, don't, I don't have to write a list for you guys. You, you get it, but um, let's be in prayers for these folks. Yeah, Carrie? Hmm. All right, prayers for Leanne Anderson. Her mom passed away. Okay. Um, keep Mac Baldwin in your prayers. Um, his health has continued to decline, and um, he has been put under hospice care now. Still at the same facility there with Yvonne, but um, receiving that kind of care now. Um, so just be in prayers for Mac and be in prayers for Yvonne and for Brian as well. Uh, lift them up. Selena. Okay, prayers for the family of Sheila White, um, one of Selena's cousins who uh, passed away with, um, from dementia. Thank you. Yeah, Bella. Okay, say her name again. Mackenzie. Prayers for Bella's friend Mackenzie, um, undergoing a lot of stress and having a difficult time. Yeah. Diane. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Praise God for that. Uh, one of her fr a friend's adult child has just uh, refound Christ. And uh, we give thanks for that and pray for um, for God to continue to move. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, th I heard great things about the murder mystery. Tim and I regretted we, we had other obligations that day, yesterday, but um, I heard it was such a fantastic time. Yeah, and it, it, that's generally how those things go. It's a lot of fun, uh, and I know that personally. So, yeah, that was that's good. I'm glad we had a, a good time and everybody was able to come and be here, and um, that's kind of some of my sermon this morning. So that's a precursor. I didn't even prime her to say that, so... We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, I'll talk more about that shortly. Yes, sir. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, John's got three students that have lost a parent in the last, uh, just in the last little bit, last month or so. Yeah. Um, wow. And so prayers for those, those young people and for those families. Mm. Okay. Uh, keep Fred Breck in your prayers. Um, he's still kind of recovering from COVID and um, doing doing well, but just, you know, it's it takes a while, and it does weird things to your body. And so prayers for Fred and for Christine um, and for, for health and wellness and all that good stuff there. Okay. Okay, anything else this morning? Uh, those that are joining with us online, um, please feel free to put uh, names or situations there or even say, could the pastor please call me? Um, and we'll um, be, glad to, I'd be glad to do that and, and check in with you guys when we take note of those names and the individuals that you list there. Um, let's continue to um, also keep um, Bob Jenkins in our prayers. He did have his hip surgery this past Monday, and uh, that went well, and he's, he's going through... Um, 
rehab and all that kind of stuff. So continue to lift Bob Jenkins up. And I feel like there was one more that I'm, that I'm missing at the moment. But um, just be in prayers for each other. Be in prayers for each other. So, all right, let's go to the Lord together then in our prayers. Um, we'll have some silent prayer while Esther leads us. And then I will um, guide us through our time and we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Lord God, we thank you for what you are doing um, around us, in us, through us. We thank you for the good things that we are seeing um, occur, where loved ones who are sick have recovered and are better, uh, where those who had fallen away from you have returned with renewed um, passion and joy for you. We thank you for how you are um, moving all around us, and, and sometimes the movement, it may be subtle, and, and we can't quite see it. But, oh God, you are moving. You are changing things. You are changing us. And we are thankful. God, we're thankful that you are so close to us. That you're not far off and away, but you're, you're right here. Right here with us. And you know what we're grieving over, what we're frustrated with. Uh, you know uh, what we're sorry about, things we've done, things we've said, opportunities we missed, conversations and um, reactions to things that we wish we had handled differently. You know about those things, and you know about our celebrations, where we got it right where we, where, we, where we were faithful, uh, where we showed up, uh, where we honored you. you. You know it all. And an amazing bit of grace, God, in the midst of all of that, you love us. You, you love us fully and completely. All of who we are, you, you embrace and you accept us. You're not proud of the things that we've done that are dishonoring to you, but you love us anyway. And you are constantly, every moment of every day, inviting us back into relationship with you, calling us, longing for more of us with you, for us to open more of ourselves to you, for us to invite you in, for us to spend more time with you, to be more responsive to your nudges and your callings and your, your drawing us nearer, oh God. Forgive us because we're stubborn and we're lazy and we're stiff-necked and we think we know what's better than what you know is best. Forgive us, oh God. Free us for joyful obedience in you. God, you've heard us as we've cried out this day. We have given names to you. Folks that we know that are, that are desperate for a touch from you, oh God. Um, our families, our, our co-workers, our, um, our friends, our students, our teachers, our coaches. All these people that we interact with, Lord, um, help us. Lord, there are other names on our, our prayer list, God, and we cry on their behalf as well. 
And there are other things that we haven't told anyone. And we carry it alone. And you see those things too. Christ, have mercy upon us. Do your magnificent resurrecting work in us and these that we put before you. God, we do not know where else to turn. You have all the answers. You have all the victory. You have all the glory. We come to you, O oh God. Hear us. See us. And won't you move on our behalf? Lord, uh, we're off into another month in this year. And uh, another chapter is unfolding for us. Guide us through each day, each week. Help us to honor you in all that we do. Continually be about the work of growing us more and more into your likeness. Be pleased with us. And Lord, we pray as you have taught us to pray. When we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now let's stand together and sing hymn number 596, Blessed Jesus at Thy Word.
standing for the reading of the gospel. Our scripture this morning comes from the gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. It says, On the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, so they, may, so they filled them to the brim. And then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let's pray together. Lord Christ, we thank you for your word that you've given to us, that we could know who you are, that we could know who we are as we choose to be your people. And God, uh, we ask that you might um, help us to understand it. Open our eyes and our eyes to, to grasp it and our hearts to receive it, our ears to hear it clearly and know what it means. Um, help us with your word, O oh God, so that we might follow in faithfulness and that we might find joy in life. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, by show of hands this morning, I want to see who likes going to a party. That's better than the first service. There were like six people in the first service. They were like, no, no, no. I was like, wow, who doesn't like going to a party? And even here, it wasn't quite unanimous. And I know some people are like, I'd just rather just stay at home. It's nice and quiet. I get that. But most of us enjoy going to a party. It's usually a good time, right? Uh, And I could think of at least three pretty solid, I think they're pretty solid reasons for why we enjoy Go, going to parties, or why we, why we decide to go to parties. One, you got invited. Someone invited you to a party, and so they want you to come. And so in some ways, even if you don't really want to be there, you kind of feel obligated to go. You're like, well, they invited us. We'll, we'll, we'll make the effort. Um, but you got invited to come, so that's the first step of engagement of going to a party. Number two, they're generally fun and a good time. Uh, now, we've all been probably to parties that should have been fun that weren't fun, and you found an excuse to leave early if you could. Uh, But generally, a party is a good time. That's kind of a basic ingredient for a party is for it to be fun, right? And then the third thing, the third, I think, reason that we go to parties is it's free. You don't have to pay for anything. You just show up, and they've got the food, and everything's set out, right? I mean, sometimes you bring something. You bring a gift, maybe. Sometimes you bring food to add to uh, and help out with whatever's going on, but oftentimes you don't have to bring anything. So you just you show up and you have a good time and you eat and then you go home, and it's sort of a no-brainer, right? Uh, a party. And and as I've thought through those three things, I think those are very true about who Christ is as well. That that life with Christ is meant to be joyful and celebratory, like a party, and we're invited, right? We're all invited to be part of this life with Christ. Every person on this planet, every woman, every man, every, every young person, every older person, everyone in between, we're all invited, right? For God so loved the whole world that he gave his one and only son. 
right? So if you've never heard that, I hope you hear that this morning. I'm saying that very clearly right now. You are invited into a relationship with Jesus. And it doesn't matter what you've done or what you've not done or what your background is or what part of the world you're from or, or any of those details. Nothing can keep you from being eligible to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Everybody is welcome. Everybody's invited. So that's, that's true. Jesus is like a party like that. He, he has an open invitation to us. Um, he's fun. Life with Jesus is fun. And that's, we're going to dig into that and unpack that a little bit more this morning. But if you don't realize that, that's important for us to grasp. That life with Jesus is a fun ride. And it is awesome. And it is exciting. And it is joyful. And if that's not been your experience then I'd like to visit with you about that. And like I said, we'll talk about that in just a few more moments. But um, it should be. Life with Jesus is a good time. And our scripture passage this morning kind of shows that as well. Thirdly, uh, it's free. <laughs> Life with Jesus is free. He's paid for everything. He paid for everything. He's paid the way for us to be in relationship with him. He's given all of himself to pay what we owe based on our, our sinfulness, our wrongdoings, and he's settled the debt that we owe because of our brokenness, and he's inviting us, and it's just a gift. It's just a gift, right? For it is, uh, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, right? It is a gift. He gives it to us. It's free. So, um, yeah, very much so in that same fashion, life with Jesus is, is like a party. And, I, and that's something that I get from this passage this morning. Now, I, we could have uh, talked maybe this morning about alcohol in the life of the believer and, and what does this text tell us about that. We're not going to talk about that this morning. That's a topic for another day and another time. There's, you can pull up all kinds of articles that will theologize that concept of, you know, is it or not, or is it not? I don't think that's really what this passage is about. That's just something that happens in the story, but I don't think that's really the focal point that Jesus' first miracle was turning water into wine. I don't think that specifically is what we're supposed to zero in on. Well, we could look at this passage and, uh, and look at how Jesus is obedient to his mother. That might be a good Mother's Day scripture, right? This may come up again in, in May. Stay tuned, right? But Jesus' mother says, hey, can you help out? And he's like, is this not the right time? Woman? He calls her Woman? I wonder if she like swatted him after he said that. But he's obedient, right? He's obedient to her. At her request, he steps in when he wasn't quite ready to. So there's, there's that angle, but we're not going to talk about that this morning either. I want to talk about how life with Jesus is a party. Here is Jesus at this wedding. He's been invited to this, to this wedding feast and celebration. The disciples have been invited to this celebration and they've run out of wine. And this is a key component, a key ingredient for the celebration, the festivities. And Jesus steps in to help the party continue to progress, to continue to unfold. It would have been very embarrassing and, and probably even shameful for this family, for this, this couple, to have not had everything in order for their wedding party. And Jesus steps in in that moment and provides more opportunity for festivities. Life with Jesus should be a party. It should be a celebration. It should be joyful. And I fully, wholeheartedly believe that Jesus laughed, that Jesus played, that he cracked a joke from time to time. Uh, you know, sometimes our images of Jesus are quite somber because there's a lot of heavy work, a lot of very um, deep and sorrowful kinds of things that happen to Christ on our behalf, right? So those are a lot of those images that we have. But I, I, this is one of my favorite images of Jesus. This picture of Jesus laughing. I'm sure you've, you've seen this artwork before, perhaps. I keep this in my office. And I just love this reminder that Jesus laughed. Now, I don't have any... There's no concrete evidence, but he was a human, so I'm sure he laughed at some point at some time. And the disciples were always saying knuckleheaded things. Had to make him laugh, right? And I think this is really true about who Jesus is, that Jesus laughed and he loved and he delighted in life. 
And that's something we need to not forget as Christians, that there's a party we've been invited to. And sometimes we're just like, all right, I'm here for the party. I got dressed and now I'm here. And we don't really bring joy and festivities with us. And I think that's something we need to come back to, that we need to remember that for ourselves, that we're at a party. And so we should be happy and excited and joyful in our relationship with Christ. It's something we need to embrace more fully in the life and the work of the church. Remind ourselves that what we're doing here at church should be joyous and celebratory and fun. At Christmas time this year, my sister-in-law gave Tim and I this, uh, this to put outside of our door, a kind of a welcome sign. It says, come in, we're awesome. And I just thought that was, that was super fun because I, I think we're awesome. Yeah, I think we're pretty awesome, you know. So for anyone that comes to the door, they're like, oh, cool, this is going to be a great place to be. And I wonder if people in our community, if they know that it's awesome to be at Wesley Way. Because sometimes when people go to church, they don't always have a good experience. Sometimes it's boring. Sometimes they don't know the songs we sing. So some of you are going like, I don't know this song we're singing right now. And, uh, and Reed was teaching us a new song this morning, which is good. But sometimes we, they don't know the music. They don't know we're standing now. Okay, now we're seated. What's happening? Oh, everybody knows this particular little song we're doing right now. I don't know what this is. Everybody's got it memorized. Is it on paper somewhere? You know, and there are things about what we do at the church that we know and understand that outsiders may not know. And so when they visit or they're part with us, it's kind of weird. And so it's hard for them maybe to engage with us. And then sometimes... <laughs> We've forgotten that we're at a party, so it doesn't look like we're at a party. And they come in and they're like, are these people happy to be here? Because they don't really look like it. And I've seen you guys because I'm up here every week. Sometimes you don't look like you're happy to be here. And you're just like, I'm dressed and I'm present. And, and sometimes that's, that's, what, that's the best we can do, right? Sometimes that's a truth. But more often than not, we should be joyful and excited to be part of this life with Jesus. And I think it would be great if... The party noise at Wesley Way became so well known in the community. You know, if it, if it just began to be something that people were curious about and they wanted to know more, like, what is going on over there at that church? I've got to check it out. Not that necessarily we're blasting loud music or anything, but that people begin to catch on to our own joy and excitement for Christ and want to take part with that. So, how do, we, how do we fix that? How do we kind of renovate ourselves? Because it's been hard over the last couple of years to kind of do some of those things. Some of those things that we're so accustomed to doing that are joyful and celebratory, we've had to kind of shut down, set aside, shuffle it around and do differently. Um, you know, if you're looking to be more celebratory in your church, having a, a global pandemic, you know, COVID outbreak kind of thing is not a good starter for that. Um, and to be honest and, and to confess, you know, I, I know from my own standpoint, a lot of the last two years has just been trying to just hold it together, just keep it all together. And in that kind of a mindset, you're not thinking about joy. You're just keeping it together. And I know we do that in our, in our lives too, right? Like I'm just, I'm, I'm barely holding it all together and we forget to have the joy that we need to have. So that's something that's on my agenda for us for this year is to see how we are working to bring more joy into what we do here. And last night was a great component of that, right? Coming together, laughing, being silly, eating chocolates and sweets. I mean, what a better thing to do with your Saturday afternoon. Come and laugh and eat chocolates and sweets and heavy appetizers. Awesome, awesome. Uh, <laughs> to look for ways to have fun. So here's a couple of ideas that I have for us for this year. And, and you've already seen these around, and we're, we're talking about these and sharing these. Our, our Be Kind buttons, Choose to Be Kind. Um, this is something we're going to be doing for the rest of the year. And we've got another batch of buttons that are en route, that, that, are, that are here with us pretty soon. So if you're like, I didn't get a button, they're, they're coming. And I like this concept because it's not... The intent behind it was not to see how we could get Wesley Way's name out there, but the intent behind it is for us to literally be thinking about how can we be kinder to one another and start 
kind of a movement of kindness in our community that who knows how far it would go, right? And I'm, I have to say I'm a little frustrated because I have yet to give away a button. I wear the button, and like no one asks me about the button, but the, what you're supposed to do is wear your button when you go out, and if somebody asks you about it or they're like, that's a neat button or what's that all about, then you just, you just tell them very simply, you know, this is a reminder for me to, to share kindness with other people. And I want you to have this button now and you wear it and you share kindness. And if someone asks you about it, then you pass that button and keep spreading it on the way. That we could uh, do something like this is kind of a, I heard someone use the phrase, holy mischief. You know, it's just like it's a little a bit of godly fun that we can have together. Something else I want us to do uh, this year to, to kind of work on celebrating together is um, as a church collectively to look at the fruit of the Spirit. There are nine fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 25. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Is that all nine? Did I leave one out? The girls are singing back there. Did I skip one? <laughs> They're like, uh-oh. Uh, and we're going to look at one of those each month starting in February, starting now through October. And um, so we'll start with love, and I'm going to write a little article just to kind of springboard us in the conversation. And it, it's not necessarily going to be the focus of the preaching, and it's not necessarily going to be a focus in your Sunday school rooms unless you want that and choose that. But I just, in our conversations, to talk about those fruit of the Spirit and how we are inviting God to grow those in us over the course of the year. I just think that would be good for us to have a direction and a purpose and something we're thinking about collectively together. We're going to work on these things and invite God to do these things in us. I think how we fix this, this sense of monotony or just uh, routine in our personal relationship with Christ as well as in our corporate relationship is to to begin looking at how can we get our groove back? How can we get out of this sense of I'm just going through the motions to, um, to, to, to growing in Christ? And so something else that I'm personally doing that will benefit me and then benefit us as a church as well is um, in the month of March, I'm going to be taking a spiritual renewal leave from the church. For the month of March, I'm going to step away from us for just the 30 days and take time to reflect and pray, uh, to retreat, to um, get outside. Y'all know that's, that's good for me to be hiking and camping and things like that. Um, and our, our Methodist system is, is structured to support this kind of a thing. It's, it's a, a beautiful gift um, that every year... Our, our clergy are encouraged to take a week for spiritual renewal leave in addition to vacation time. And then every four years to take 30 days of spiritual renewal leave. And I, I, I need it. <laughs> I need it because I have just been piecing it together for the last couple of years. And, um, and I think this will be good for us as much as for me to bring back a fresh Michelle back to the table and keep us moving forward uh, with joy and thanksgiving and, and with a direction and a purpose and not just keeping it together. Um, so you'll learn more about that and you'll hear more about that. And we're, we're, we're working on getting all the details together so that, that pastoral care can continue to be tended to while I'm, while I'm away. Um, the preaching and all of that, worship stuff will all be tended to while I'm away. So we'll keep you well informed on that. But um, what are you doing to Continue to grow in your walk with Christ and be excited about who Jesus is. If you're not there, then that's, that's a good question for us. We need to, to examine that. If, if life with Christ is a drudgery, you're not doing it right. You're, not, you're missing out on, on the joy. Life with Jesus is a party, and he's about celebration and about joy. And we need more of that in our church. We need more of that in our world. We need more of that in ourselves. And so I challenge you to that, to figure out, how, I, need to, I need to get my groove back. I need to get some joy back in my relationship with Christ. And, and, and be, be willing to be vulnerable with Christ about that. To, to specifically ask that in prayer. Lord, what, I, I miss my joy in you. Help me. How do I... What things do I need to do for that to be rejuvenated in me? And, and invite him to work in us and grow that in us. Um, and then same, same kind of prayer for us as a church. Lord, what is it that we can do to be growing? How can we continue to have excitement and joy as we come together in this place, as we go out and serve in the community?
You may already have some ideas about that, and I'm expecting and hoping that you'll share those with me. Uh, to email those to me, pastor at wesleyway.org, uh, to drop something in my office, just to, to talk about that. Grab me when you see me um, and say, this is an idea I have, and let's be in conversation about how we can continue to be excited about what God is doing here. Uh, it's a party. Life with Jesus is a party. He's invited us to be present with it. It's fun. And he's already paid for everything. We should show up and not just be like, all right, I'm here for the thing. What do you, what's going to happen today? But to be like, oh, yes, I am here and I'm excited and I'm ready for whatever is before me uh, to have joy in Christ. All right, let's pray. Lord God, I thank you uh, for what you're doing in us. We thank you for your constant grace and love towards us. We thank you that there is joy in you. And like the Old Testament says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So God, that you would um, help us to go from maintaining and sustaining to vibrancy and growth and excitement. Uh, Lord, uh, the, the setting of the last couple years hasn't, hasn't really lent to that very well. So help us, Lord, look for ways to continue to fellowship with one another, to celebrate together, and to have joy in you. Renew us, O oh God, for the purposes of your kingdom, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. We come now this morning to our time of celebrating in Holy Communion together. If you haven't already, we do have those in the back of the sanctuary. If you want to raise your hand, if you didn't grab communion on your way in, and an usher can bring that to you. Um, over here, if you guys can help Kim with a couple of... We have gluten-free also, if you need gluten-free. And those that are watching at home, if you have crackers or a biscuit or some bread of some kind, um, juice or water... Something that, that can fill in that substitute, that will work, and we will participate together. Let's join together in our invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all those who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now with the great thanksgiving. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same fashion after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood, the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice and union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. 
By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You know, you don't have to be a United Methodist to participate with us in Holy Communion. If you desire to be in a loving relationship with God and in a loving relationship with others, then we invite you to partake with us this morning. Let's go ahead and separate the wafer and the juice. And when you've got that done, if you'll look back up here, and I know we'll, we're all together. Let's hold the bread up. Dear friends, this is the body of Christ that is broken for you. Take now and eat. Amen. If you hold the cup up. Dear friends, this is the blood of Christ that has been poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this in his name. Amen. Oh, Lord Christ, we are so thankful that you would give yourself for us. And not just part of yourself or some of yourself, but all of who you are you have given for us. Your love for us is so great. Oh, God, may we not take for granted this great gift, but may we choose to walk in faithfulness. In response to your love for us, may we choose to live differently in ways that honor you. Be glorified in us, Lord Christ. For these that are here present in this building, for those that are watching online, for others that are partaking with us in communion in different communities and different churches today, uh, we give thanks, O God. Work and move in and through us. Be glorified in us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. As you leave this morning, we have a basket on the table there where you collected your communion. Uh, if you have a gift you want to give to the, go to the needs of those in the community, you can put that in that basket. It's marked accordingly. You can put your cups in the little trash can that's there at the door as you head out, and uh, we'll have that go in that direction. If you'll now stand and receive our benediction this morning. Dear friends, go from this place with a spring in your step, a whistle in your mouth, and a song in your heart. Rejoice in who our God is. Have a party with Jesus and invite others to attend. Go in peace. Amen.